going to uh, start on the task of understanding dynamical models of poverty. We will inf introduce something called the influence diagram. We'll quickly then move towards doing nonlinear dynamical systems models of poverty. And to do that, we need simulate. Okay, so we're going to start on simulate today. Um, with uh, You'll find it's uh, real easy. I sort of invented a tutorial, and I think it works. So influence diagram <coughs> is a model. You could close your eyes right now and have a model of poverty, okay? But usually you have to communicate a model, and usually better than a language is to use diagrams, mathematics, etc. So here is what's called an influence diagram. So um, here's one way to mo model uh, um, sort of human development, okay? So the three uh, nodes are wealth, health, and knowledge, or education, okay? I use knowledge rather than education because education doesn't imply knowledge necessarily. Okay, you can get knowledge also from experience. But um, nonetheless, uh, let's for, focus on the interactions between those. If you have lots of wealth, it's easier to get health, right? Because you can buy the best health care. If you have health, it's easier to get wealth because you can go to work and get money because you show up. If you have health, it helps you go to school and get knowledge. It, um, and, and if you have knowledge, it helps your health because you learn about hygiene, you learn how to take care of yourself, etc. Then furthermore, at the, on the right side, it interacts fully with the left in that knowledge, you go get an engineering degree, influences your wealth. Your wealth influences your knowledge because your wealth allows you to pay for your education. Okay? So there's this very tight coupling um, between these three issues. And then with respect to wealth, there's expenses and there's income from a job. There's other influences on health, like the environment and the disease. And there's health care, there's school or experience that affects knowledge. Uh, if you think about it for a minute, this, this diagram, uh, it's rather obvious, right? I mean, it's not rocket science. It's easy. But it does teach you a lesson, an important lesson. And that is, when you look at it, you say, okay, well, I think the most important thing in development is health. I'm just going to focus on health. Do you see the problem? Because it's embedded in all these other issues. And if you don't take care of other issues too, or somebody takes care of them, then it's hard to make progress. Okay? So the coupling between problems is really uh, quite profound. It creates, it creates a lot of difficulties. Okay? That's why when someone says, I'm taking a holistic approach to development, what they mean is they're going to look at a multifaceted approach and try to address many things at one time. Okay. Um, now, one principle of modeling is, is that you can always sort of add something to the model to make it more accurate. Okay. So, the, the normal next thing to add for a, an influence diagram is to add what's called strengths. So, for instance, uh, on the health, the knowledge, it might have a strength of 0.7. In other words, it has a big influence the health has a big influence on knowledge. Knowledge has just a big influence on health. But wealth has a bigger influence on knowledge, blah, 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 blah. And these numbers are all relative to each other. In this case, I'm just making them between zero, um, plus one and minus one, okay? And uh, it, it, it can be very, uh, like, heuristic, ad hoc, to write down what those numbers are. It, 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 you really just use a gut feeling, usually, okay? But this is more expressive then, because it also says how strongly different things influence each other. Okay? Next step. Let's get rid of those. The problem with those kinds of models is there's no quantification of numbers like income in number of dollars per day on the, the previous diagram. Okay? Um, but you can't always quantify with numbers. How do you quantify your health with numbers? That's hard. Okay. Well, you say, wait a minute, we use EKG for that. Or was, was it EEG? Or is it your blood content? You know, like with diabetic checks their blood contact, see if it's under 100, whatever. Okay. Or is it your BP? Or is it your pulse? Or is it your tongue? See the problem? You can't just measure one number. Well, the big 
abstraction and gross simplification. The other problem is there's noise. Things that have noisy influences. Things have nonlinearities. That'll become clearer what that means. And dynamics, that is feedback. This affects this, then this affects this, and it, it's a cut tight coupling of that type of feedback. So in order to do all of that, we're going to go to MATLAB Simulink. Okay? And uh, they're called MATLAB Simulink models. Sometimes people call them diagrams. Um, so this is going to <coughs> improve drastically the representational capability of a model over the influence diagram case. But always remember, there is no such thing as a perfect model. It's impossible. Why? Because physical, everything in a computer is not, I mean, it's not physical reality. You understand that? When I simulate poverty on a computer, it's not like there's a little poor guy in there. I mean, it represents someone out in the real world, right? So obviously it's not accurate. You try to make it as accurate as you can. The advantage of simulating things on a computer is you can play with parameters, adjust things, and see what the effects of various parameters are on other parameters, inputs are on certain outputs, etc. So it's very useful. Okay. Okay, so here's how we're going to do this. Um, I'm going to, there's uh, four programs we're going to go over uh, at the book website. Uh, these are at the book website if you want to play with them on your own. Um, but I've got. Uh, um, MATLAB started up here in the background, and uh, here's the first program. Now, uh, I, I, I'm going to fumble around a little bit. Um, MATLAB has a glitch. Uh, my trackpad won't work for doing this, and when I use my mouse, it's very sensitive. It, it Sometimes you're going to watch, it's going to go boom, jump, 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 okay? I, I just, I can't get a, MATLAB can't figure out. I was on the phone with MathWorks. They can't figure out what's wrong. Uh, they got a bug in the, 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 the <coughs> graphical interface in Simulink to um, the computers. It's affecting like, and they probably have a million people using MATLAB, right? It's affecting four. I'm one of them. <laughs> okay. I have no idea why. Okay. So, um, first one, top. Now, Here's the way this works. You grab, just a second. Um, let me grab this. The, the you start up uh, the Simulink library browser, and on the library browser, you can look at these things. You can grab these and move them over to the palette. Okay. So I can grab this constant thing and just drag him over here. I can grab any of these and drag them over, and I can connect the arrows, just point and click, click, connect the arrows, you're off and running. So that's how I created the guys on the right. Okay. So let's study the cases I created. So in particular, uh, the top one, I, I took a constant of one. So uh, the way you think of this is the arrow coming out of the one has what on it as a signal? A one. Okay. And then it goes through a gain. Now, some engineers aren't used to the term gain, but this is like gain on your stereo, or, well, you don't have stereos anymore, on your iPhone, whatever. It's volume. <coughs> so this says multiply by two. So the number coming out on the arrow on the right of the little triangle thingy is a two. One times two is two. And then the scope means oscilloscope, okay? But it should have been called, like, Plotter, because it's going to plot, okay, um, a signal out. So what's really going on underneath here is there's time that's running. So this is a simulation, and in particular, if you go to this little gear here, here, and you go model configuration parameters, blah 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 blah, it comes up here and it says, oh, I'm going to start this simulation at zero. I'm going to end it at ten. You can just think of it as seconds, and. Uh, it's going to use some uh, ODE 4.5, that's a Runge-Kutta, um, fourth order Runge-Kutta Runge um, simulation, okay? And uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it's running a simulation. So what it means here, let's kill this guy. <coughs> what it really means is a constant is not just a one. It's a one held constant for 10 seconds. So it's like a, a signal that's got a, a constant value for 10 seconds, okay? So coming out of the two is a two that's held up at two for 10 seconds. 
So the scope will show just a line, height to zero to 10 seconds. Okay, so what you do to run it, beep means I'm done. Pop this guy open, there he is. Our fancy first simulation, zero to 10 seconds, height of two. Okay, now let's go to the second. See, that's the problem. Uh, this guy right here, <laughs> oh, you have to have a sense of humor, you know. Uh, this guy right here, look at him. Got the one coming in. Now I'm going to put a step in. Signal's going to come over, come up, go like this. It's going to add, and that's going to go into the scope. So the question is, is what, what do you mean by a step? So you pop this guy open, step time. In other words, step time means starting at one second, make a step go up, initial value is supposed to be zero, final value is supposed to be two. So this is a step of height two, okay? And uh, it adds to the one. So I added a constant one to a step starting at time two of height two. So what's the final value? Three. So you go up here, there you have it, okay? So let's build a little bit bigger signal. There's a uniform random number coming in. Here's a repeating sequence right here. This guy is a is a, some uh, time values. It's a, uh, a sawtooth wave, as electrical engineers call it, um, added to a noise going through a gain of three, and it goes into the scope. What does it look like? Oh, there you go. There it is. Noisy sawtooth, right? So nice and easy. So you can, do you see already you're creating complex signals and it's that easy. MATLAB, in simulate, simulate, you can quickly create basically any signal you want, okay? Um, now, let's see if I can move this thing around without jumping around. Okay, now, some of the classical things, um, signals are sine waves. Um, so there's a sine wave. Uh, I'm going to run this guy through a nonlinearity, which is a saturation. The saturation just says when it gets higher than a certain value, it just chops it off. Or lower than a certain value, it just chops it off. So if I do this guy, I see what? I see a sine wave with the tops and bottoms chopped off. Okay? So that's a nonlinear processing of a sinusoid. And uh, the next one uh, is... Uh, this one, the dead zone. Okay, well, let's pop that up and see what it means. This one's a little unusual. It says that it's not chopping the top and bottom off, but when it gets near zero, it, it, it chops in this way. Right? Okay. Um, and there, this represents a, a stiction in a mechanical system for you mechanical engineers, for instance. Um, next, we're going to go to calculus now. That's an integrator, it's a sum. It literally is the integral sign. This is continuous time, okay? So somebody tell me what comes out on the scope in this case. Somebody just said it, What? say it louder please. A ramp. a ramp. Why? Because it's summing the area under a step, right? Under a box, it's a ramp. It's one of the first things you do in calculus, right? Okay, now we're gonna take an integrator uh, and uh, um, I'm going to do something just a little bit different. I'm going to take uh, the, uh, the integrator, I'm going to put a ramp in it. All right, so what's the integral of a ramp? So you just, you just remember, freshman calculus, I'm integrating under a ramp. How fast does it grow? Quadratic, Quadratic right? So there's one more order than. And so if I look at um, this guy, there it is. There's your quadratic. Okay, now um, I, with respect to the, just a second. Uh, well, if you're going to do an integral, do a derivative, right? So this is, a, this is a continuous time derivative. So you tell me, if I run a ramp and do a derivative, what do I get? Constant. If I, now, we're not going to bother looking at that one. 
Now I'm going to take a sign. I'm going to take a derivative of the sign. Derivative of sign is? Cosine. And then I'm going to take the same sign signal. I'm going to run it into what is that black thing there? This is called a multiplexer. So these are like wires. This multiplexes the signals on these two wires, puts them on one wire, runs them in the scope. So this is a this is a two-dimensional signal coming out of that multiplexer. That means over time, it's a vector. So if you run that in the scope, obviously it's going to plot two signals on the same thing versus time. So what is that going to look like? It's going to be a sine wave, and it's going to be a cosine wave. Shift it, right? So, so you pop that guy open, and there it is. Sine and cos. OK? Any questions on that? OK, next. There's this fun thing called the signal builder. Um, and I'm, you're going to be using this in one of your homeworks. Uh, the signal builder is to try to help you <coughs> build crazy complex signals. And it's this little point and click box you can pop up here. Um, so I'm going to take out of this box, I'm going to click create um, two signals coming out of the box. The top one, you can just create this signal and you can grab, see the circle points? And all the bars, you can grab them and move them around and make them any shape you want. Okay? And in the bottom one, I just had it generate some kind of a noise pattern. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, so I can invent signals here by point and click. Okay, and they come out, they come out of the box. Notice the double arrow thing. More than one signal. Now I demultiplex. In other words, I take two signals, I, this one into two, I add the two signals together. So I added that funky signal on the bottom to that uh, signal, and then I'm run it into the scope. Okay, so with the scope, what do I get? Right. You can create extremely complex signals really fast. Okay, um, questions, comments? That's the first part, okay? All of it's continuous time. What we need to do now is go um, discrete time. Now, what discrete time means is, is it's sampled at some sampling interval, okay? It doesn't exist anything in between samples, essentially. So this is a, <coughs> it's sort of really similar in a way, but it's fundamentally different also. So this constant, when it's outputting the constant now, it's going to output thing, a, a signal between 0 and 10, but it's only going to go like whatever on according to the sample period. And the way you set the sample period is you um, go up here to a little gear guy and say model configuration parameters, start and end time, fixed time, fixed step size, fundamental sample time, one. Zero second, one second, two second, three second, up to 10 seconds, that's all, it's, that's what it's creating. So the constant signal that's coming out of the, the, the box there is a sequence of 10 va values of one, or is 11, I mean, maybe zero plus whatever. But you see, you see it's different now. So I've got the gain, and I go into the scope. And you run it, and you pop this up. And now I changed my plotting. What I did in the plotting here, there you see what I just said, right? You see little dots? Height 2, cross there. And what I did, if you're going to um, use this toolbox, uh, or the simulink, you have to know how to change these plots. So what you do is pop open the scope parameters and uh, uh, you can uh, you change tick labels, time range, you know, uh, uh, sampling, let's see what sampling, yeah, it does there, uh, style. Okay, so under style, I say no line. But if I change it to line and say apply, it looks like that. So all that does is, is it says connect a line between every two subsequent points. Okay? It's doing a linear interpolation. And then you can't tell the difference between that and the continuous time case. 
But I will tell you that most engineers don't plot a bunch of dots because it's not very readable. They plot this with the understanding that everybody knows that there are lines between the dots. So, okay, so keep that in mind. So, uh, you know, you can uh, put no line, apply. Up here, you know, you can do colors, all kinds of, all kinds of stuff, okay? Um, now, of course, this guy um, looks identical to before, right? But you know it's not. So you don't look at it and say, oh, it's the same. It's continuous time. No, you, you envision it as having, it's just sequence of dots, and they're connected with line, okay? So um, what happens here? So this is a little unusual, and you might not first think about it. <coughs> you remember the noise in the sawtooth? And there was just a little noise in the sawtooth. Everything seemed cool, but now, where'd the noise go? The sample period is too big to... Exactly, the sample waiting period is, what it's actually technically is filtering out the noise. It's ignoring the noise, okay? So sampling period um, does matter, but look, conceptually, most of this is the same. Saturation, oh, wait a minute, that's a little different because it's a discrete time sine wave now, okay? It's still chopping off the top, chopping off the bottom. Dead zone. Oh, I, this happens once in a while. I'm clicking and it's not doing anything. Just a second. No, now it seems to start working again. <coughs> Which one are they in? That one. Yeah, there we go. It's chop. It's hard to even see that it's chopping off that little bit horizontally. Now, this one's going to be next. One's going to be important. We're going to be using this next class period. What is the first thing I say to you? Integral, and then I say discrete time integral. What is it? Sum, perfect. It's just a sum. It is just a sum. Nothing more. It's that easy. See, in MATLAB, though, they confuse the matter by writing it a discrete time integrator with this um, KT, um, uh, I can't even read that, over Z minus 1. Okay, Z is the Z domain variable, blah, blah, blah. Just ignore that. You don't need to know that. It's just a sum, okay? So, if I take a step and I do a sum, I get a ramp because it's summing at every instant all the way up. And then I, if I take the sum of a ramp, I get a quadratic. And then if I take, the, there's a discrete time derivative. What's another name for the easiest discrete time derivative you can think of? Famous guy. How do you approximate first time you learn about a derivative in calculus? What do you do? It's, it's slope, right? So this time minus some time ago divided by the amount of time, right? So that's the slope. That's Euler approximation. And that's all this block does is an Euler approximation. It's that easy. So there you have it. It computes the, a constant. Okay, um, and then uh, here's the sine and cos, no surprise. Um, and um, the last one uh, it has the problem, it samples things out. It's basically the same as before. Those blocks that I just explained to you, those are the ones you need to know. I mean, they're that easy. The problem is I'm going to take huge diagrams, connect millions of these together, and it's going to be completely baffling. Right, Valerie? Right. No, come on, it's not. <laughs> uh, it's actually very methodical. You build, you don't just throw a bunch of these together and hope they work. You build it systematically, and it's very doable. I, uh, most of the time, I will not be requiring you to create um, the right programs and simulate. It is correct to say write programming and simulating. It's graphical programming, point, click, okay? Um, most of the time, you'll adjust a block or two, change a parameter, rerun the simulation, get the data. 
Let me point out right now a pragmatic thing. You're doing a homework. You need a plot from the scope right here. Let's say you want that guy in your report. There's a number of ways to do it, but the easiest, you know, well, I don't know what's easiest on your computer, but, you know, you can, uh, you can just go like this <coughs> and say print and save it as a PDF or save it as a Postscript. If that file that comes out of a PDF or Postscript, you can dump right in the Word, drag, drop. It's that easy, okay? So, so you can, that's, that's all there is to doing, um, to doing it electronically. Um, okay, questions before I switch to go just slightly more complex. Yes? How do you get the discrete inputs? Once again, can you tell me? I mean, uh, well, that's what's kind of weird because it, didn't, it wasn't evident, okay? But once you set the thing up as discrete, it assumes everything's discrete. How, how did you do that? Oh, right here, <coughs> under the little gear guy. Okay. So you, you set your solver type as fixed step and discrete. That does it with a sampling time of one. But the inputs are still discrete, uh, like inputs are still continuous or are they discrete? They're discrete then. They're discrete? It knows. I mean, it, it's just the solver which is changing, right? It's, nah, it's more than that. Okay. Yeah, it knows that a constant isn't putting out a constant at every little instant, it's only putting them out at sampling. Yeah, it inherit. you say it inherits. That's the terminology MATLAB uses. Over on the left there in the library, you can see that continuous in a discrete category. Oh, yes. Um, so for some things, yeah, good point. Do you see what he's saying? Because uh, like on the constant, it inherits. But like he's saying, um, you see the discrete and continuous, if I go up here and press um, continuous here, well, then there's, you know, Laplace, you see Laplace variables there, you see all the continuous stuff, integrators, derivatives, discontinuous, well, that's, that's discontinuous, there's discrete, there's all that discrete these stuff. These are just the operators, on, these are just the operators, but for the input, it's taking inherently. That's yeah, what yeah. Okay, any other questions? Okay, now, um, so let me kill that, and let me go to, uh, uh, dynamics. So now we need to talk about dynamics a bit. Um, the first one to talk about is this guy. Now I know most of you haven't seen, all right, you've all had differential equations. That in that box is just a differential equation. It's a linear, linear ordinary differential equation. It's nth order. Okay. It is very, very simple because if you think of the simplest case, it is simply x dot ax plus bu y equals cx plus du where everything's a, everything's a scalar okay now i'm not going to expect you to, you're looking at they're like oh i don't know about this this guy shouldn't have taken this class this guy's an ece man no, don't worry about that i will explicitly construct these cases when they come up but suffice to say you've seen this but i'm seeing a no if you're taking differential equations, you've still seen it. You, well, how can that be? You've seen that. You've seen that. You've seen that. So what's wrong with that? Uh, we'll talk. I mean, it, it really, though, it's that easy. Because it's all scalar. Just because I'm saying, that, look, this is a line, right, in U. This is a line in X. I'm saying that the derivative changes according to those two lines. So I'll be able to say what these are. Again, I'm going to come back. In the specific cases, I'll say exactly what that block is. And you'll be like, oh, that's all it is? I mean, it won't be a problem. You do not need to know differential equations to take this class. Okay, so uh, now the problem is, is MATLAB sort of assumes you've had lots of classes. And because of that, they label things as if you've had those lots of classes. But um, so like in this case and so forth. Now, um, let me uh, open this guy up once. And uh, let's look at this 
this case. So this is, this means that this is x dot equal 1x plus u uh, plus and y equal x. That's the system, right? That's what it's implementing in this case. Now the thing is, if you say, what does this mean? It's actually much easier than it first appears if you just pick it apart. So this is just y equal x. That's simple, so forget that. This guy, that's too complicated, ignore it. So just look at that. Now if you look at that, you say, wait a minute. You're telling me x dot equal x. That means this, so what, is it, what does that mean? Well, let's, let's write what it means. Let's start at some value. Let's plot x of t, because this is creating a simulation, right? It, it's a function of time from you know, t greater or equal to 0. Now, if I start here, um, well, x is positive. This is positive. x dot is positive. Means slope is positive. So make one little infinitesimal step to the right. How does it go? Slope's positive. The slope, in fact, is 1. I can, I can even say how it's moving. It's like that, right? We're, gonna do, we're doing simulation in our heads now, right? We're doing simulation in our heads. So now, once you move that little, little, little bit, let's do it again. What's it doing? Well, <coughs> now, that, the dot's even bigger. Slope went up. Slope went up means, and then it just goes and takes off. Okay? We solved the differential equation. That's a differential equation. Now, if I just add on u, look, it's just going to add positive to it. And if u is positive, it's just going to take off. But guess what? What if u is negative? If u is negative, then you could yank this guy down. <coughs> okay? That's, that's, that's it. So let's run this thing. There it is. Takes off. Isn't that cool? You can do the simulation in your head. I mean, that's something to go home and brag to mom and dad about. Okay, now, so it makes it, MATLAB makes it look a lot more complex than it is, really. Next one, the second one is even worse because that's the Laplace variable S. In other words, Laplace transform. I, d I don't know if they learn that in differential equations these days, but you know, normally you do. But it doesn't matter. All that thing is is a first order system. Now. I want you to think of these at a high level. I don't want you to worry about the variables. I'm taking a step, I'm putting in the first order system. Well, what's a first order system? Guess what? You're gonna get in one probably today and drive home, it's called a car. You press on the, act as though the input step, when you step down, what happens? You speed up till you get to hopefully 55 miles an hour. As long as you're not on a surface street. Okay, that's the first order system because you put in an input this, you get out that, right? There it is. Okay, that's all there's to it. Don't worry about what's in the thing, just think of the dynamics and think of your car. See, in first order systems, like you're living in first order systems all the time. In this room, temperature control, temperature, right, goes up and down like a first order system. Okay? Apply heat, like that, same thing. So don't worry about. Um... Now, I got this signal builder here. Uh, it's just a, a pulse. And I run it through this guy. So, surprise, I turn the heat on, it goes up, I turn the heat off, the temperature goes down. I apply my accelerator, speed goes up, I let off, speed comes down. Now we're going up and down, that's all. Okay, next. Now I'm gonna take noise, and by running it, you know, around the bottom right here, it's just gonna end up on the scope. Then I'm gonna run noise through that first order system. Now, you people that are into audio files, that are into uh, music, this, is, this, this uh, top path is what happens in your system. 
Why? I mean, there's noise. I don't care how good your headphones. They're what's that Dre guy? Um, <laughs> my sons love that. They're on. I mean, whatever. Uh, they use low pass filters. They get rid of noise. Guess what a low pass filter is? A car. Weird, huh? But it is. And so what I'm saying is, is you can filter out this noise if you want in this manner. Okay. I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm not going to, I don't have to go into the details because I'm getting a little excited and like, I, when I'm writing all these blocks, thinking of all these cases, I'm going like, I'm overshooting probably by about five to ten percent of what you need to know because it's just so darn fun. Okay? Um, but I do want to cover um, the case um, right here. This case is an important case. I want to come back to the automobile. The automobile is, is, uh, is a classic example of having something called cruise control. It's an automatic controller. So what do you do? You get in your automobile, you get on 315, you're going 35 miles an hour, you punch in 55, and you just sit back and it takes you up to 55, takes you all the way home, right? Okay. So the question is, how is that happening? Well, the way it's happening is they're sensing your speed, right? Feeding it back into a controller. It's called a controller. And it is automatically modulating your input to your car, your accelerator, okay, uh, to keep you at right speed. Even if you're going up and down hills, you're hitting wind, you've got all the in-laws in the car, not, et cetera, et cetera, okay? It's taking care of all that stuff for you. It's a feedback control system. Now, I need you to know these ideas because um, they're going to be basic to what we're doing throughout the class later on. Now, feedback is like everywhere in this room we have temperature control, fortunately. It's whenever it starts getting cool, it turns on heat. So it warms up a little bit too much, then it turns it off and it's continually regulating that heat, right? So think of feedback, how it's, it's a little tricky, but it's a pretty easy idea. It's just, we're, humans are good at thinking about it. it it's, uh, but you'll, you'll see it arising in amazing places. Somebody named from, I, I named the automobile and temperature control. Somebody else, give me one. Where is feedback, control, feedback processes used? Hormones. Where? Your body uses it for hormone control. Yeah, it's all over the human body. We often call it homeostasis. It's feedback control. Where else? Autopilot, autopilot on an aircraft. Right? That's a good example. Um, it's all over your, your electronic equipment, like in face lock loop for tuning your uh, AM, FM stations, etc. It's really all over the place. So uh, I want to show you how to simulate it. Um, it's as easy as you would think. I take my car, this is my car from above, okay? One over S plus one. I just told you it's a car, right? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put 55 miles an hour in on the left. I have speed coming out of the right, I feed them back, I form an error. Here's the trick. 55, let's say this is 35. 55 minus 35 um, is 20. 20 times 2 is a pretty big number, and it's going to raise here. So if this goes up, you know what happens here, right? If you increase the accelerator, you, you push harder down on the accelerator, this speed will go up. Well, that means it'll go up to 36. And then, and once it goes up to 36, you can compare here, it's going to back off on the accelerator a little bit, but it'll still go up a little bit. And then it goes around the loop. Can you simulate it in your head? It's the same challenge as over here. Okay, so you, you, you can, uh, um, Why does this happen? It, I'm asking it to go 55. It's at 35. And it, it's, I'm sorry, I put it at zero initially, and it only goes up to a little more than 35. Now, this is a little tricky, I'll, I'll tell you right now. But let me show you how you fix it. Um, so this is how you adjust things and simulate. You, you, I'm sorry, let me grab this, pull him over here, grab this, go like that. I want that integrator. Let 
There, now I have a new Simulink diagram. And I'm going to run it. And voila, 55 miles an hour, plus a speeding ticket, <laughs> right? Because it overshot. My cruise control killed me. But officer, my cruise control was wrong. We designed the controller wrong. It comes up, it goes over the top, comes back down, settles out. So somebody tell me, try to gain some insight here. Think of why is it overshooting? Because you're stepping down the darn accelerator initially too hard. So how do I turn that down as an engineer? You adjust this guy. What should I adjust him to? Up or down? Down. Okay. Run. Ooh, we brought it down. Always try increments of times time. Just kidding. You never know. You, but um, you know you can gain insights. That was too much. So um, boom, baby. Fifty-five miles an hour. Okay, so you can adjust things. Now, I'm not expecting you to know how to do this on your own. My point of this is, is simply, you, in MATLAB, at times, I'm gonna ask you, change this number to this, and rerun the simulation, and you'll see all these plots moving around, and you just, just give me a plot and explain what happened. Okay, you don't have to uh, know how to move those around, I'll tell you how to move them around, okay? Um, okay, so uh, questions. All right, next one. Discrete dynamics, this is, this is easy, easy to go through because everything is the same as before. And in fact, I shortened it a lot. Um, so if I run this guy, uh, you know, I have um, different um, outputs. Uh, Um, it's, 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 you, I, I mainly leave this one here for you, uh, if you want to mess with it, the code, like I said, is at the website. Um, there's nothing conceptually new in this discrete dynamics one over the continuous dynamics one, okay? So what I'm going to be doing is, is, this is an initial tutorial to give you a sense of what Simulink is like, and then later I'll ask you to adjust the blocks, the parameters, run it, and then create the, the get the data out. Um, probably the single most important thing you, you need to do is number one, go download the latest version from OCIO. Okay, make sure it's the latest version because MATLAB did some updates uh, recently and it won't, this won't, this is in the latest MATLAB, it won't run on the older versions. Make sure you can run it on your laptop or whatever. And uh, um, and then you'll typically, I'll, I'll tell you what program to open. Okay, so you gotta know, you, when you, you gotta start up MATLAB, you'll know how to do that. And then once you get to the MATLAB window, uh, I just wanna tell you that you go to, the, you get to this window right here, um, go to home and then right here, you see this Simulink library? You hit, hit click on that guy. And that'll, that'll take you to, uh, to this guy. And then see this little uh, folder thing right here? That'll allow you to open up the program you downloaded up from my website, okay? And you'll, you'll run and then adjust. And then you'll pop the scope open. Remember, you go over here to print, save as PDF, save it as PostScript or PDF. Well, wait a minute. Uh, Yeah, those are probably the two best, most common ways um, to do it. Dump, it. dump it in your Word doc or whatever, and uh, you're off and running. It's that easy. Okay. Um, questions? Anything? That, that is a little bit more than you need to know for this class, actually, in, in terms of simulating. I mean, um, but I decided it was better... I'm doing a lot of uh, like continuous and discrete time because I'm going to start all discrete time, OK? 
Okay? And then later in class, I'll do continuous time. But predominantly, everything in the class will be discrete time, which is a lot easier, actually, um, to deal with. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I finished a little early today. Uh, and so I'm, we're going to meet. Remember, we're meeting with groups. We're doing videos. We're going to uh, Varsity Club. All right. Have a good one.